Hello. Good afternoon. Or good day, good morning. Not sure from which side of the world you are joining us. So uh, I'm really happy to welcome you back into our third um, webinar within the series of uh, Business Central and um, Power Platform Integration. My name is uh, Totilas de Guise, or shorter uh, Tony, uh, and I'm leading Power Platform and uh, CRM team uh, within One Click Factory. And also, uh, we are um, welcoming together the QBS, uh, QBS partners as well uh, to, this, uh, to this webinar, since we are part of the same group. So, and just a reminder about One Click Factory. So, we are a um, company which founded more than uh, 10 years ago. And with a primary focus uh, to Microsoft Dynamics products, and the first was, of course, Navision, then later uh, Finance and Operations. And since the last year, uh, we started Power Platform and CRM practice uh, within One Click Factory and also uh, within uh, QBS Group. And uh, today, actually, we are opening uh, that new scenarios which are really interesting and uh, really um, empowering business of integrating uh, business central or uh, finance and operations as well to power platform where we have not just a canvas app model driven apps but we also have um, dynamic crm apps and other things okay uh, so, quick housekeeping uh, points. So, session is being recorded, and your questions are really welcome. So, you can uh, raise them during the session. Um, me and colleagues will help uh, uh, to catch them on the way, and um, I'll answer them in, in the end. So, in the handout um, section, you'll find the handouts. You can download them. So it's information about uh, trainings on Power Platform and CRM, as well as the uh, summary diagram, which uh, uh, puts all these integration possibilities into one picture. As I mentioned, uh, this is our third um, uh, webinar within a series of Business Central and Power Platform integrations. So we already had a generic overview. Then we had a session uh, which uh, I uh, explained the connectivity via connector part. And today we are checking the integration with the Dataverse. And uh, next week there will be a session uh, with my colleague uh, about Business Central and uh, Power BI uh, integration. So you are still welcome to register for upcoming one. And um, also there are recordings available from previous ones if you have missed that. And uh, since we are diving deeper into this topic and I believe you are really interested in learning um, what are all those possibilities maybe you have already tried. So um, we are really happy to share that knowledge. Of course, it's really hard to squeeze into one hour. Uh, even for us, when we split it in, into four parts, it's even hard to squeeze everything into one hour slots. So we are really happy to uh, help you in person to develop and design the right integrations you have in your projects. And um, uh, during this uh, um, series, during the uh, September, month we are offering you um, for um, um, to, to register into our free uh, scoping workshop uh, which you can do uh, 
um, with us. We'll send you a questionnaire uh, to fill up uh, some more technical details, and then we can see together and propose you uh, the, the possible approach and then possible scope uh, for that integration or implementation on the Power Platform side. And uh, yep, so we are getting registrations for that. So um, yeah, uh, you can hurry up and uh, we still have 10 places uh, available uh, for these workshops and you can fill out the form um, uh, until the October 1st. Okay, so let's get to the business and let's check what we have here. So Power Platform and Business Central. Um, if you remember from um, uh, previous uh, webinars, we split it into three um, technical approaches and technical scenarios we can implement that. And today we are addressing the Dataverse-based uh, scenario. So, um, Looking into simplified architecture, so where Dataverse, or it, as it used to be called Common Data Service, uh, stands. So in this part of Power Platform, uh, we have um, automatically living on top of Dataverse. We have uh, model-driven apps, and then uh, we have Power App Portals, which is uh, powerful, uh, engine to cover the scenarios of uh, um, exposing data to your customers, to your partners for external usage. So it's like a content management system, plus um, it provides possibility to uh, securely expose the data, let your customers do some self-service uh, uh, management of their cases, of their orders, and uh, etc. There is a, a separate security mechanism which protects the internal data which you have to configure. Um, of course, sometimes, um, and it's very important to to make it uh, uh, make it correctly. Uh, because recently there was um, announcements also. Uh, or buzz in the community that um, if users are missing some uh, configuration points and um, setting up some opening the data by default, then data could be exposed. But then it's very important to make it very securely. And um, on top of Dataverse, we also have um, Dynamics CRM uh, family apps like uh, Dynamics 365 Sales, Customer Service, Field Service, Marketing, Project Service, Automation. Um, ERP apps like Business Central uh, are running on their own infrastructure in the cloud, or it could be also on-premise. On and um, if we want to let them speak directly, uh, we have to integrate it to Dataverse this uh, integration and we have two default options which are now provided by microsoft which we'll take um, take a look into um, reminder about um, the licenses uh, which we are having um, so good news that um, this uh, business central license is treated as uh, business apps enterprise level and it automatically includes the usage rights of Canvas, model-driven apps, portals, and, and uh, cloud flows, and the Dataverse uh, itself. Um, just the only limitation is that those apps um, should run in the context of Business Central. So if you want to utilize the Business Central license, then the apps should run, should be related to Business Central. That kind of makes sense if you are extending, if you are doing additional components or portal, for example, then you have to, um, you can use the, um, the same license. Okay, if you want to grow up and, and extend, then uh, um, a full Power App license or Power Automate license uh, might be needed. But now Microsoft is bringing really good offer and... Um, if not an offer, it's a change in the pricing and they're cutting the Power App 
prices by half. It used to be uh, 10 and 40 dollars for per app or per user license, and now it will be five and 20. So that's really nice. Nice option if you like Power Apps and you want to do more and more of things and even unrelated to Business Central inside of Power Platform. Um, yep, but there is a small caveat. Um, this is a screenshot from um, um, a licensing guide. So even though we have uh, the license of uh, our Business Central license is entitled to use Power Apps, but what we are missing, we are missing Dataverse capacity for our business central licenses. Yep, so it means uh, if you would like to provision a, a Dataverse database, uh, yeah, we don't have any gigabytes available. But uh, if we would have at least one uh, sales um, professional, let's say, license within a tenant, yeah, we'll get 10 gigabytes um, available for us. Or of course we can buy, uh, um, we can buy um, the storage itself as capacity add-on because it's available. You can always extend it and uh, like in, in the increments of one gigabyte. And uh, so then you can provision uh, the Dataverse as well. Okay, so, so what is that Dataverse? Uh, is it just a fancy name for a database? Is this something like SQL Azure? And um, um, what it can do for us? Actually, it's much more. It's API-centric. So it means that um, first we have the API endpoint, uh, which allows us to speak to the service. Of course, it's only cloud service, so we don't have Dataverse on-premise. Um, it originating of course from um, CRM data layer but of course over the last five or more years it was really refactored and made fully cloud ready and it was taken off the uh, CRM bundle or CRM product as itself and Dataverse was uh, decoupled and made as individual separate service okay so apis are in the center and that's really nice because um all the standard apps um power apps uh, power uh, automate power bi um, power virtual agents custom applications any custom integrations they can utilize those apis provided by dataverse and uh, the nice part that uh, we are getting those apis for free I mean, uh, for free of effort, uh, because uh, in immediately when you provision, when you create a new table within the Dataverse, uh, it automatically gets added to the OData endpoint with all the fields, all the table, and etc. You, of course, you can create your own custom APIs for some actions or some combined functionality, but that uh, API to access tables, it's automatically there, automatically provisioned for you with all the OData protocol, filtering, extensions, joins, uh, um, fetches across many tables at once, and et cetera, et cetera. So that's really, really nice. Uh, then we have uh, security. Uh, layer, which gives us authentication authorization and pretty extensive auditing uh, mechanism. Then we have logic part, which uh, brings us uh, business logic, a low code way to do business logic, and also plugins, uh, which allows us to develop a .NET plugins and host them in the cloud. So to extend our logic much more. We have automatic duplicate detection rules, automatic rollup calculated fields, which are just configurable. No development is needed. Then we have data modeling, uh, reporting, catalog itself, data validation. And the nice feature I am always mentioning is a mobile offline because, again, we are getting the mobile app, which is there, and we can use it. it it's just uh, configurable, same as our web approach. And uh, 
out of the box, we are getting it enabled for offline usage. We are configuring which tables to enable it, uh, which fields and a couple of rules, and then it's just available inside uh, our application. No development needed. Of course, then we have storage for relational data, for um, um, uh, unstructured data for files, and very nice feature is a search, which automatically goes to Azure search service. And um, um, it combined through many different tables. So you enter search in one line, you're getting results from all the tables. You can do the typos and etc. It's really nice indexing. And now the latest improvements. Also, you can search throughout the files and uh, etc. If there are attachments and um, etc. So that's really powerful. Uh, then we have integration to Azure services, even hub, service bus, or custom ones, webhook. We have export to SQL or to uh, data lake. Um, when it comes to um, integrations, it's very important to mention common data model, um, which is concept uh, which Microsoft introduced together with the SAP and Adobe um, um, in context of Creative Cloud, so that uh, we are, Microsoft is defining um, the structure of uh, standard entities, especially ERP related uh, standard tables, so that it would be um, easier to integrate. Uh, of course, its own ERP products uh, are following that, and this standard is open sourced. And uh, other providers who wants to integrate to Dataverse, they can just follow uh, this data model uh, pattern, uh, so that uh, it would automatically land to the correct uh, data model. Okay, so. What kind of scenarios uh, do we have in um, integration between Dataverse and uh, Business Central? And uh, before me forwarding, uh, moving forward, um, I want to ask you. So if you have integrated with the Dataverse or Common Data Service, um, what was your usage scenario afterwards? So now I would like to, to hear if, if you have integrated and what kind of scenarios um, you were implementing with that integration. And, oops, and we should get a ball running. Okay. Let's see what we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Twenty twenty one has tried, uh, has used the integration and the main scenario. Um, most popular scenario is integration with the sales. That really makes sense. Then we uh, have 10 uh, who um, try to integrate with a custom model-driven apps uh, for non-ERP extension modules. Um, and uh, only two for a customer partner portal and one other. Okay. Yeah, if, if you have some other options, uh, you can share it in chat. It would be really interesting. Uh, would be really interesting to hear. Okay, but meanwhile, uh, let's move forward. Yep, so um, integration to sales is the most common scenario. Um, but now let's dig into the technical part of it and let's see um, how it's implemented technically. So we have two, two options. 
data synchronization or data sync, um, which does um, data copying between the systems. It could be one way, unidirectional. It could go from Dataverse um, back to uh, Business Central or vice versa. One system is master, and then uh, records are being sent to another database. That's a kind of uh, fully uh, understandable scenario. But we also can do the bidirectional synchronization, which also makes sense. Let's say we want to allow users to update our customers in both systems. Why not? Um, then, of course, it technically it works. But usually what we end up with, we end up with a conflict. If at the same time, um, the same customer was modified into, into systems. Uh, then, of course, we can resolve the conflicts manually or we can set um, uh, one of um, conflict automatic resolution rules there. Okay. And um, so for virtual tables, um, it's a different approach. So uh, Business Central is the master for data. And in Dataverse, we are just consuming uh, them through APIs. So we don't keep the copy of the data in Dataverse, but we always load them live from uh, Business Central. That's um, a pretty new approach, much later, and uh, this technology is still in a preview. Um, overall, from Dataverse perspective, it's, it's not in a preview, but the data provider um, from for Business Central is is in the preview. Okay, so let's uh, review both of the um, options in in more in in depth. Okay, so data synchronization. So the good news that it works both for Business Central online and also on premise. Of course, Dataverse itself is only uh, online. Um, if uh, we have online version of Business Central, then um, both uh, Dataverse and Business Central should be in the same tenant. Of course, if uh, it's on-premise, it could be even coming from a different Azure um, Active Directory. Um, I want to emphasize the last point uh, because probably that would be the first evaluation which you have to do before integration because it might just stop your integration right away. Uh, and um, this is kind of feature limitation. Uh, you can call it as, as you want. Um, it's about the base currency of Dataverse environment and local currency of your company in the business center, which you want to integrate. And the currency should match. The problem there is that on the Dataverse side, um, you cannot change. You set the currency at the early, early stage when you are provisioning the environment. Afterwards, you cannot change the currency. And that's the issue. Of course, in the Business Central, it's possible to change. But again, it's not sure uh, if it... So technically, it's possible, but uh, if it uh, really matches the, the business point and uh, etc. Because sometimes when we provision Dataverse, we don't care about currency. So we choose just something like euros, dollars, local currency, whatever. Uh, because uh, th that currency thing is not primary in Dataverse. We think of CRM and et cetera. And until we come to actual price lists, actual offers, quotations, um, we don't realize that we have the currency somewhere sealed. So yeah, that should be the first validation you have to do before integrating um, Dataverse and uh, Business Central. Now, what are the uh, main um, process of setting up um, the integration? So if you're doing it for on-prem, 
Uh, you have to do some magic with Azure Active Directory. You have to create an application uh, in the tenant uh, where Dataverse is, the act, um, Azure uh, application. Um, and it, it serves later as your um, server-to-server -server integration account, like a security because you get application ID, uh, secret, and um, all other components, which uh additionally you convert into um a so-called application user within the dataverse itself so it will become as an <clears throat> a technical account for a business central to speak to a dataverse um of course if um mm, if you are in, in the online, so then mm, just enter your credentials and um, it automatically will pick up all the environments and will set up uh, set up that with a default application. Um, when you are setting up uh, the integration, you also need to um, have a user with a system administrator role within the Dataverse. So, and you have to enter those credentials and um, either give it to the user who's configuring or just enter somebody's credential with the system administrator role. And then one of the first decisions you have to make is the team or person ownership. Um, because in the Dataverse, um, all security uh, is based on the ownership of the records. So if we speak about accounts, it's owned by some person or a team. If we speak about the contact, it's the same. So usually it's somebody who created, but later you can reassign, you can own by team as well. Uh, but the ownership is important later to determine the um, security and access as well uh, to the specific records. Yep, so the records in the database could be there, but uh, some people will see it, some people will not because of the relationship um, to that, to the owner of, uh, of that record. And yeah, so the, the easiest one, of course, is with the team. Uh, person ownership is uh, maybe more complicated um, because then you have to uh, synchronize uh, users as well, match the system user in the dataverse to um, um, uh, a user in, in uh, Business Central. You have to map them. And then um, also, if somebody wants to, to, sh um, um, to use it outside uh, that person, they have to share and et cetera. So team uh, ownership is um, more common. So now when you start configuring uh, this integration, you will find in the Business Central, uh, you will find uh, two options. And in general, I, I uh, forgot to mention that all this um, Dataverse sync, uh, uh, data sync approach is managed uh, mainly within Business Central. So it deploys a couple of uh, parts into a Dataverse automatically, but all the management, extension, configuration, everything happens on the business central side. While with the virtual tables, it's more or less vice versa. All the management happens in the dataverse. Yep, so in order to um, set up um, uh, this integration, uh, we have two options. And the uh, Dataverse one is the base. Even if we want a uh, sales one, we have to configure Dataverse first. It used to be um, um, sales as, as, as the main one before. Now the Dataverse is main because Dataverse is just a phone technical foundation and it has a couple of base entities. And sales adds some more tables and entities on top and some extra logic for like item um, item uh, availability in, in the stock, for example. Okay, so 
but in the end, you can enable both. So what we get when we enable uh, the first, the dataverse. So we are getting the following set of uh, table integrations. So these are kind of the main ones. So we are getting uh, customer contact, currency, um, salespeople. It's mapped to the user. Um, shipment address, uh, I think, shipping. Um, shipment method, shipping address, and vendor. Um, and that's the basic set of the tables which are being uh, integrated. And as you see, uh, it automatically gets the direction. So it could be bidirectional. So it means the changes from both systems would come, come back to each other. Or it's uh, unidirectional um, from integration table or to integration table. I will just, on the way, I will explain what integration table is. Um, and additionally, if you enable um, sales um, integration on top, you are you get additional uh, tables uh, provisioned. Um, okay, not tables provisioned, but um, um, additional integrations, uh, uh, integration mappings mappings added uh, on top. And additionally, we are getting more kind of sales related things, which is um, um, sales price, um, sales invoice, invoice header, opportunity, items, uh, price groups, and uh, unit of measures. Um, now, when you have, uh, have this um, enabled, you can do a bit of configuration, not so much, um, like changing direction, um, row filtration, or for example, you can mm, change the uh, schedule of synchronizations. Uh, because by default, we are getting synchronization jobs provision for us in the Business Central. And um, by default, they're running every half an hour. We are able to minimize it to five minutes but then it really depends on the mm, capacity, how much records we have, and how many other jobs we have, and how they will interfere to each other. Um, as I mentioned, bidirectional uh, integrations. Uh, for bidirectional integrations, we can set um, different type of conflict resolutions uh, based on the events. So one conflict resolution is um, um, available for update conflicts. So if we had the records, connected records, and then uh, the update happens, um, so we can decide which table will be master. Um, so just a reminder of the terminology, what is integration table? So integration table is um, um, let's say the shadow copy of dataverse table inside uh, business central database so what we are getting we are getting more or less how much it, it's possible in terms of um, uh, data type uh, com compatibility um, we're getting this shadow copy and uh, then, of course, then it physically just transfers to, to that shadow copy in the business central. And then uh, this table is called integration table. It's not kind of explicitly visible to the user. But then uh, it's the whole logic how this integration uh, configuration will transfer records from this integration table to original business central table. So. Integration table here stands for a dataverse table. So if we have a conflict, it means the update didn't ha happen. So we can say that we automatically will send data to integration table. So the business central will be master. Or we can do it vice versa. Uh, with a conflict of deletion, 
so we can um, say that yeah we can restore records or uh, we can just decouple them if uh, the deletion happened now uh, one of the first um, issues uh, we usually see when we enable this integration and for me as the more a crm a power platform um, guy it was uh, kind of confusing to learn that okay so we have integration why it doesn't work by default i'm running jobs nothing happens uh, but the whole idea behind is that um, the main scenario which is uh, proposed by business central is that users would do uh, the record coupling manually that's a bit um, um maybe, maybe not it's not the best scenario of course to have this option is really important uh, because you can always fix or change and etc but uh doing it from scratch it's probably not the case and um we can enable automatical record creation, which for most of the tables is uh, disabled. And in the configuration part um, for these table mappings, uh, we have column called uh, synchronize only coupled records. Yep. So um, um, if it's checked, it means there will be no automatic creation. Of the records we have uncheck it so for example for customer for contact um, in, in this sample it was unchecked and then uh, it means if you create a new customer in the business central uh, since it's bi-directional it will uh, create the copy of the uh, it will create account in dataverse and vice versa um, okay um additionally each table has uh the field mappings the list of field mappings which um yeah all fields provided are enabled and what we can do we can disable them if we don't want to synchronize some of the fields this is sample for uh, customer uh, synchronization mapping and uh, yeah so we have the, the main um the main fields being synchronized so we can uh, disable some of them and we also have uh, the direction even the table itself is bi-directional uh, but we are in um, let's say synchronizing credit limit only from business central to uh, to dataverse okay so <laughs> Another painful mm, learning for me, uh, like as a Dataverse guy, where many things we're doing just by configuration and we get to development really at some late, late stage when um, it's really not possible to configure, that um, this uh, Dataverse uh, integration from Business Central, it's not extendable by configuration. We have to develop new uh, AL extensions. Um, you, you should deploy them and uh, etc. And uh, mm, <clears throat> uh, in order to add new tables or add new fields and, and so on. So um, uh, usually the steps which you have to complete with this um, additional um business central extension uh, is that you have to create a new integration table which which i mentioned which will be a shadow copy of uh, a dataverse table um, then you have to create of course pages to display um, then you have to enable coupling for records so the actions the users can click themselves um, actions to manage couplings uh, um uncoupling actions um uh, you have to create a default integration records so that would appear in that integration mapping uh, table you have to create the field mappings 
Um, you have to enable users to reset integration mappings and customize synchronization uh, rules uh, depending on the specific tables. So, um, yeah, so uh, that's it about uh, what I wanted to share about the uh, Dataverse um, um, integration. A um, couple of more findings um, which we faced as well uh, was, for example, uh, the integration of um, customers from Dataverse to Business Central. And for example, in the address in Dataverse, we have a free form uh, country uh, where we can say that, okay, it's United Kingdom or just UK or United States or USA or um, just US or, or something. So um, while in Business Central, we have in, in, in the mapping, we have already the country record. And if it does not match by name, then we have the synchronization error and we have to resolve. So that's a pretty frustrating um, frustrating issue. And of course the easy fix um, is um, probably to update, okay, not so easy, but um, the most uh, feasible um, fix would be to uh, update uh, the, the countries on Business Central because it's not a big issue to maintain them um, in the same format. Of course, then we need to develop some client-side validation or server-side validation or provide some options uh, for users to choose from the uh, valid list of countries instead of entering them uh, in a free form because this is out-of-the-box field and in, in, in the address, it's a uh, free form. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's it. Now let's take a look into uh, virtual tables. Virtual tables, or as they used to be called virtual entities, um, they're still in a preview, uh, but in the preview is the data provider uh, which uh, we got uh, just early uh, this year. Uh, virtual entity technology um, from Dataverse itself is it's already available for a while. Um, the initial versions of it uh, was uh, based on the only read-only approach. And uh, recently it, it got the full create, read, update, delete, um, operation support. And it works only on OData v4 API providers. Um, yeah, so good news is that this is not very specific technology or approach, which is developed specifically for Business Central. It's used for uh, FNO as well, the bigger brother of Business Central. Um, so we have, uh, we see much uh, um, usage already in, uh, in, in the field of uh, finance and operations uh, with the virtual tables. So this technology is, is really moving faster. The, probably the main limitation we see here is the uh, APIs uh, on Business Central side, which are mm, slowly catching up, but um, we still see that uh, this uh, V4 um, or in Business Central terminology, V2 and point of um, APIs are getting improved uh, just now. So from Business Central um, side, we have uh, uh, this uh, feature available only from uh, uh, 17 plus uh, version uh, from Business Central online. So this technology is not available for on-premise business central. So if you are on-premise then or hosted um, on Azure or somewhere, just take this option out. Um, both environments have to be in the same tenant. So that's, uh, 
makes sense. And Dataverse users must have uh, Business Central access and license. So it means I, as the Dataverse user, with the same credentials, I'm calling in the background Business Central APIs. So I supposed to have license and as well, I supposed to, mm, um, to have access to a specific records and uh, et cetera. And in this sense, um, the ownership of the tables are always organization. So we can't assign the ownership to teams or persons and et cetera. So all records are just organization wide ownership. So how it works. Um, so first we have to install this business central virtual table provider uh, from app source and we have to install it on Dataverse. So now all the configuration and uh, uh, main kind of master of this integration is a Dataverse. Okay, so let's take a look um, quickly into, into what we have here, into the Dataverse. Okay, so I have the demo environment with the business central. And uh, mm, yeah, so here I have the integration, uh, integration with the uh, um, enabled uh, with the, um, both Dataverse and sales. And um, also, yeah, where we can see some synchronization errors. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, the postal codes, mm, yeah. Uh, for example, doesn't work here, uh, was not able to resolve, and uh, etc. So we have this type, this is uh, data sync approach. Now let's take a look into Mm, um, Dataverse part, and now I'm switching to Power App Maker Portal. Um, changing environment, which is integrated to mm, to my Business Central environment uh, to production. And um, when I deployed this uh, data provider, I got many solutions uh, uh, installed for me. So uh, yeah, I'm getting company, virtual table uh, uh, support, catalog, virtual tables, and etc. So I already made the initial steps. It's very simple. You have to uh, click one feature, um, one setting in the business central side, and then you come uh, and install this uh, virtual table provider on Dataverse. And then um, you mm, configure by selecting the uh, by selecting the environment. And let's take a look into the tables. Um, so now here I see all Dataverse tables available in the environment. I'll switch filter to all. And let's see what we have uh, related to uh, Business Central. Yeah, so first thing, uh, so how we start, uh, so we, we get this um, configuration part. So this is a table and in the data, there is one record. And uh, now if I open it, so it's very easy configuration. I just um, uh, choose the, the environment, uh, the, the API address. I choose the environment, which is production, and then um, uh, selecting the company uh, from that uh, environment. And that's it. And then uh, the Dataverse goes to the list of APIs. It pulls over all available uh, tables, which uh, we can use. Uh, so nothing is uh, created automatically. The next thing we do, 
we go to okay. we have another table which is created for us it's available business central uh, table okay let's go to data and now what's happening it does the live uh, request to the API endpoint and uh, then it can get uh, the latest list all the time. And what we're getting here, so you might um, get familiar. Uh, so as I was trying to, to understand this Business Central world part uh, about the namings, so it seems that there are different type of names like API endpoint, here it's named API route. Um, but in general, what it consumes, it consumes V2 endpoint. So it's a new uh, OData V4 provider, which has V2 version from Business Central. A bit confusing. Um, but what we are getting, we are getting similar type of APIs, what we have uh, with... Um, uh, what we have with the uh, Dataverse, just not for all tables automatically, but just uh, for um, uh, some set uh, of those. Okay, so V2. So, but um, looking and comparing to Data Sync, here we have a much longer list of tables which we could. Uh, integrate to Dataverse and utilize in Dataverse, like sales orders, sales quotes, uh, sales shipments, um, vendor payments, purchase invoice projects, um, uh, documents and picture integration is still not very well designed. Um, yeah, so we have locations, journals, and uh, uh, other tables available. A um, um, couple of um, mm, options from other endpoint, uh, VAT group, VAT submission lines, uh, statuses. And also if you develop custom APIs for this V2 endpoint, then uh, you can uh, see them here. Okay, so what we can do, because I already uh, provisioned the items table before, Let's try to provision, uh, for example, um, customer. Okay. Let's go and edit. So it opens the form, this uh, Dataverse form. And uh, again, it's very easy. I just have to click uh, visible. And also I can uh, choose to keep it refreshing uh, to refresh the metadata. And if there are new fields, um, uh, columns are being offered, then I can, uh, I can get them as well updated. Now what happens? So now the, the plugins and scripts are creating the virtual table definition for us inside of Dataverse. Okay, so it takes time, uh, but meanwhile, we can uh, make a quickly check. Uh, items. Item, yeah. Um, this was created before, so it gets the Dynamics 365 BC prefix. Um, it looks like normal table, um, but in general, it's a virtual. It shows all the uh, fields which are available. Uh, it has some default form uh, with a uh, small uh, amount of fields, but I can extend and add more fields as I want. I can create my views to do filtrations and etc. And all this is just configuration. And um, now, if I check uh, data, now it makes the live request from API to pull me the data. So 
So virtual tables uh, works slower. And of course, the default view was showing us only one field. So I have to update view to get more fields exposed here in the view. And again, I'm looking here from developer uh, portal perspective, not from the user perspective. So for user, we built um, the views and etc. cetera um, it, in, in a bit different way. So, and I'm automatically getting uh, the records and I can even do the updates here and the updates will appear in the uh, business central because I'll do direct uh, modification through API. And of course, if there's some data validation happening in Business Central, it will kick off and I'll get some error messages and uh, et cetera. Okay, um, let's get back to the slides. Okay, so virtual tables are new, so they are have limitations and some of the limitations are due to the preview. Some of them are due to the nature of uh, um, um, those virtual tables. And uh, some of the limitations is that we can't use charts or we can trigger flows, but that's not a big issue, I would say. Um, of course, we cannot customize them in the Dataverse because they are just API call to Business Central. So it's just Business Central's master. As I mentioned, attachments and images are still an issue uh, because the API itself returns not in the normal OData format, but in the stream. We have the same issues with the Canvas apps. Um, um, blob uh, to multi-line support is still not supported in preview. And the saddest part, of course, is for me, it's uh, portals, because if we want portals, then we should go to uh, data sync. Now, this is a quick view into what Microsoft is uh, uh, changing uh, or promising or um, promising to change in the future. So these are two uh, update waves uh, for this year. So what we are getting, of course, we see that both technologies are getting updates uh, for virtual tables. We got um, update with the um, uh, relationships between uh, native and uh, um, and virtual tables. Uh, and yeah, so I think this is still in a preview. And also we are getting the uh, pagination uh, for virtual tables. Um, for sales integration, uh, there is added item availability uh, synchronization. For Dataverse integration, um, we should update to a more secure service-to-service -service, um, uh, security model instead of uh, just um, this uh, web service key. Um, yeah, APIs are really uh, center here and Microsoft uh, improving the uh, performance of those and um, giving us a um, couple of more improvements into um, Dataverse integration, like uh, coupling in bulk. As I mentioned, that is pretty annoying to do couple uh, each individual uh, record to record. Mm, and then also the improved um, integration um, of multiple records with a specific jobs, not um, so that not uh, individual table jobs are running only. And um, mm, for sales integration, uh, they added also uh, the uh, units of measure for resources next to the item uh, units of measure. So question, which one to choose? Both have pros and cons and um, Probably, usually the, the pros of data sync covers the cons of uh, uh, issues of virtual tables and vice versa. Like in virtual, we have real-time integration and in data sync, it's only half an hour or it could be minimized a bit. But anyway, it's not real-time and um, all this conflict uh, um, resolving things and etc. And the extension uh, uh, with the 
development of um, um, new extensions you can add uh, new tables um, so probably the answer uh, and we can learn here from finance and operations is that it's a combination of both because for example if we have the customer and account it really makes sense to uh, synchronize them to correct data model because account is representation of the company and the customer and the vendor in in the business central so it makes sense to move them and synchronize inside um, others let's say parts which are not used in the in the um, uh, dataverse data model then it's probably worth to to do the virtual tables and of course if we need portals then virtual tables doesn't work at the moment so question can we use anything else uh, or it's only about those two so uh, yeah, of course, these are, let's say, more out-of-the-box approaches Microsoft offering. Uh, but we have other um, uh, options available within the platform. Uh, of course, we can develop our own from scratch. That's always possible. But uh, just as the platform offerings, we can do Power Automate. We can do Dataverse Data Flows, which is to import data to Dataverse but it could do on the schedule as well. Um, and you can do it everything in configuration, no development needed. Then Azure Logic Apps, also same as Power Automate, just uh, visual uh, development, uh, Azure Data Factory, or old good SQL Server integration services, which can mm, run on schedule as well. Yeah, the reminder about the offer, if you want, yeah, just to... Uh, to, to discuss it with us, to get our help, just uh, fill in the form. Uh, my colleagues will share it. And uh, yeah, you can do it till the October uh, 1st. And um, uh, be quick as uh, uh, we are trying to fit those um, workshops also into our schedules and not much are, uh, are left already. So the last uh, webinar within series is coming uh, next week about Power BI. So you can still register uh, for this. And yeah, remember to uh, download our hands out, handouts there uh, in the chat section. Um, if you open the, the box in the tool, it's um, next to um, chats, questions. There are handouts uh, as well. So that's it from my side. Thank you very much for, uh, for participation, for the questions. And um, yeah, uh, talk to you later uh, with, uh, within uh, those uh, uh, workshops. And also wishing you a good time with uh, my colleague Igor, uh, uh, learning about the Business Central and Power BI integration. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.